Hey everyone, and welcome to another tutorial brought to you by the Minecrafters. I'm Captain Jack, and in this block spotlight series, we'll be unraveling GregTech one machine at a time and showing you some in game applications along the way. GregTech adds a ton of awesome machines and a complexity to the game that may make you want to pull your hair out. Gregor's T designed this add on to balance the modded Minecraft experience and make the game more challenging and long. Once added into your game, GregTech's configuration files will override many of Industrial Craft 2's current recipes, as well as recipes from other mods, making some previously easy to craft machines much more difficult to make. If you love the additions Greg Tech brings to the table but don't like the recipe changes, feel free to change your own configuration files as you, see, as you see fit to adjust your personal gameplay difficulty or take Greg Tech out entirely. Crying about how hard it is won't do anybody any good. So sit back, relax, and get ready for an information inoculation in this episode of our Greg Tech Block Spotlight series. Enjoy. <laughs> Episode 6 is going to be all about the industrial centrifuge. This item will take complex items and break them down into their individual component makeups. Now don't get this block confused with the industrial electrolyzer which deals mainly in element breakdowns. Okay, You can kind of see that if I mouse over this. Um, there's a really complex one and this machine will break basalt dust down into its individual compounds. So let's take a look at what's inside this machine. This is the GUI. Up here you have a slot to input empty cells. You have a slot in the opposite corner to directly input lava and we'll see that in a second. We have a slot here to input the item that you want to break down into its individual compounds and on the surrounding sides this is going to be the result of that component breakdown. Now if you have a re recipe that doesn't require cells I believe you can actually put an extra stack of the item that you want to break down up over here and it will pull from this stack down into your main stack. This item when placed can be removed by using an IC2 wrench, a regular one. It can um, be removed with an electric wrench but you have a 10% chance of getting machine parts with both of these tools. You're probably going to want to stick with the prototype Omni wrench, which you'll need to shift click the top or bottom of the machine to remove, pick up, and move around. You can also click any one of these arrows to get the, one of the many recipes that this machine will make. I'm not going to really go into how this machine breaks down items into components because it's just far simpler to look at NEI for this machine as opposed to the industrial electrolyzer. Now if you place any kind of, or, or if you place a uh, ender tank next to an industrial centrifuge, put it on output mode, it's going to slowly fill up this lava spot down here in the left and it's going to use lava for I think the only recipe that requires lava and it requires 16. We just saw the 16 got emptied out. It got thrown into here and the process of the centrifuge or, or the industrial <laughs> centrifuge has started and it will take a various amount of time depending on the recipe. So you can do that or you can pipe it in with waterproof piping. This is a uh, liquid duct here. If I choose to empty the tank it's going to go right into here and when I hit 16 it's going to start the process and it's going to get going. Now this is one of those machines that does not require, um, actually it does require, eh, does it? Does this just take it straight? 14, 15, okay, so you don't need cells. You don't even need cells for this uh, recipe. You're just going to throw it right in there and it's going to, wow, I think it's going to make cells for us. Ooh, that's weird. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we'll check that out in a second. Um, we have the input and output slots of this machine. Um, you can insert, well, I put dust in here, but it's not really dust. I'll just put input. Input and other. Okay, you can input items in the top, and that's going to fill up this slot right here. In the bottom, you're going to insert empty cells, and that's going to fill up this slot right here. You can output here, you can pull out on any of the surrounding sides of this machine. And let's go back and take a look. This is going to take a while, so we're, we'll come back to that later. Automating this machine is pretty simple, basically the same thing as the induct industrial electrolyzer, it's, and it's why I use the same little area to go over this machine. On the top, I have it inserting hydrogen, and on the bottom, I have it inserting empty cells, just like we talked about. The empty cells go up here, the hydrogen goes down in the middle, and if I take this out, it's going to automatically start refilling for me. Now, it's not actually going to make more until I empty out these uh, output slots. 
So I'm going to flip on my ME dart cable and it's hooked up to this import bus right here from Applied Energistics and it's going to empty out um, starting from the top. It's going to go in a round robin fashion and it's going to keep checking the boxes to make sure they're empty. It's going to remove these now and the process is going to, is going to start again because this um, process is going to create too many empty cells for this spot to handle. And that's how you automate this machine. It can be automated in other ways, um, but this is the way I prefer. So as long as you remember these things, you can do whatever you want with it as far as automation. Now, at its default state, this machine can take 32 EU per tick input. So that means it can take two transformer upgrades, two more HV transformer upgrades, overclocker upgrades, and it can take the build craft upgrades. Let's take a look at this real quick. We've been over this a while. If you mouse over the machine, you can see in the bottom of my screen, it says of it, possible upgrades, OTBM. It will also tell you the maximum default EU per tick, which is 32. And these upgrades, or the upgrades available for this machine are OTBM, which means overclocker, transformer, battery, or buildcraft upgrade, which is MJ or buildcraft power. The overclocker will double the speed of the machine at the cost of four times the power, the transformer upgrade can upgrade this machine all the way up to 512 maximum EU per tick input and then you're going to have to use the HV transformer upgrade to go above, above and beyond there to 8192 EU per tick input. The energy storage upgrade will increase the internal storage of the machine by 10,000 and the lithium battery upgrade will increase the internal storage of the machine by 100,000 EU. The pneumatic generator upgrade if applied to the machine will allow it to take buildcraft power and the RS energy cell upgrade will allow it to internally store more of that buildcraft power. So what is this machine used for and what can it do? Well this machine probably is very commonly known as the machine that will get you started towards nuclear or fusion, your fusion reactor and it will take uh, one hydrogen, turn it into one deuterium and it's going to take four deuterium to turn into one tritium. Now let's just take a look at some of the other recipes. Um, this, this thing can do some really awesome stuff and some really um, unexpected stuff. Some of it you can make some pretty uh, superfluous creations that are very impractical. Um, you can make plutonium and the pl plutonium process is going to take an extremely long time. It's going to take 1000 seconds and this is a Greg Tech sensor kit I have hooked up to this machine here and that's going to give you that plutonium dust. Well, what can you do with the plutonium dust? The captain has an answer. Plutonium dust is a very powerful form of uranium dust and when put inside a nuclear reactor it has an unbelievable knack for creating massive amounts of power. Another recipe that's available to put inside here is endstone dust and this is actually going to be one of the other recipes or one of the three chemical reactions that you can use inside a fusion reactor. This is going to give you those helium-3 cells. Now don't get them confused with regular helium cells. This is what you want for the reaction. These can be used for other things. And you can see this endstone dust is being broken down into regular sand, a tiny pile of tungsten, and two different kinds of helium. Sticky resin, if you have a lot of it, um, you're going to want to use this. Four sticky resin or is, is going to get you 16 or 14 rubber and these plant parts. So uh, this is a good way to maximize your sticky resin stockpiles. Solstan, Solstan will give you a really interesting recipe. It's going to break it down into regular sand, coal dust, saltpeter, and oil. I didn't know this, but uh, obviously I do now. You can actually take Solstan and make oil out of it. Um, so if you have an abundance of soul sand and there's no more oil wells left because you've drilled out every single well on the entire earth, this might be an option for you if you just really need that oil. Um, here we go with the reaction. Now we already have uh, this in here showing us how to make deuterium and this is going to take hydrogen turn into deuterium and I'll just leave it inside there. Um, and then we're going to have deuterium and it's going to take four of these to start making tritium. So the recipe is a little wild and it takes a lot to automate fusion reactors, um, but if you just slowly keep uh, centrifuging this deuterium, you're going to end up having a lot of tritium by the time you're ready for your fusion reactor. Lava cells creates a really interesting recipe and we actually use this on the server to create excess amounts of copper because we kept running out. So we just pumped lava straight into a centrifuge and had it make some tin for us, electrum, four copper ingots and this is going to be 16 lava cells is going to make this 
and the tin can be converted right back into cells to create a neat little machine. So this is a nice recipe. Basalt dust, here's that really complicated one and not every tooltip will show you what the component makeups of an item are. This one will break down into olivine dust, which I'll show you how important this is in a second. Calcite dust, flint dust, and dark ashes. Now if you go over here and you, you click on um, U for use on the olivine dust, we're going to notice that it can be used inside an implosion compressor with 24 industrial TNT, which is a little bit ridiculous to get you olivine, which is a um, gem that's found in the end. Or you can use 8 olivine dust with an advanced circuit to make these data storage circuits. And this is actually a really, really useful recipe if you're just not uber enough to go into the end yet, or if you just want to slowly mass produce olivine dust, because that's going to be something you'll need a lot of. Now here's another super important recipe. Pulverized shiny metal, which a lot of people might get confused because this is really kind of the same thing as platinum, and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, if you centrifuge this, you'll get a tiny pile of nickel dust, but you'll get an iridium ingot, or iridium uh, nugget, and nine of these put together is going to give you uh, an iridium, or a piece of iridium. So if we put this inside shapeless crafting, this is one of the ways to get, oh goodness, I don't have one, here we go. Okay, it goes straight to an iridium ingot. So that's one way to get that rare and powerful metal there. Now this pulverized shiny metal is a direct result of either throwing your ferrous ore through a pulverizer or an industrial grinder. Now throwing it through a pulverizer is not always going to give you the shiny metal, but you have a 10% chance. But the industrial grinder will always give you a tiny pile of platinum dust and four of these will make one platinum dust. One platinum dust can be made into a platinum ingot which can be bent into a plate and we're going to be using platinum um, in the future a lot. So this is a really important recipe. Now you, you are going to get a lot of um, liquids and possibly you may wanna, might want to store them inside tanks just like this. Most of these liquids can just be emptied out into any kind of tank that you want. Build craft, Zycraft, craft, um, rail craft, little portable tanks, whatever you want to do, you can empty them right out into there. Let's just take a look at this real quick. No, okay, so this is going to give us ink. It's, I forgot. That's why. So there we go. This is the industrial centrifuge. This is going to be a really important... Oh, one more thing I forgot to go over, putting upgrades in here. I'm going to do it real quick. You can use your portable scanner on this machine. It's going to tell you all kinds of information about it. If you put a transformer upgrade in there, it's going to consume it because I'm in not in creative mode. And you can see that there's one transformer upgrade in there now. And you can upgrade it with Buildcraft Energy with the MJ upgrade. And now it will tell you that it takes MJ. And you can see in the third line from the bottom it says 0 of 1000 MJ. Okay. So pretty simple machine. However, it's going to be super useful in the future as we hammer towards the fusion reactor. Thank you for watching, guys. As always, check out all of our social media outlets. And as always, stay poised.